is because that's why you have to see to me that social media is weaponized um, because taking information and when someone is teaching information that's not accurate or not correct that's what people are going to believe right so the majority is that information can really truly still steer people wrong well it's funny there's a i can't remember the quote exactly now you're gonna have to find it. it was a quote from malcolm x and he was talking about the control of media and like the way that they control media can have you you know uh rooting for the oppressor right which is really kind yeah. of what it's designed to do so yeah i mean that's the problem with media is that you know there's a lot of filters i mean yeah. one, one of the thing about the united states um is that you know it's not really set up for our best interest just how they run the country i mean like how they proliferate information to us um like i, I remember thinking back right like this is something very very simple but back in the day when they had the food pyramids right and uh I can't remember how it went down, but it was like, what was on the bottom? It was like your cereals and however that pyramid was, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It turns out that that whole pyramid was completely wrong, yes. right? It turns out like, and this is, this was like from our government, right? Telling people, uh, you know, advising people on how to eat, like what to eat. Years later, we sit back and say, yeah, this was completely incorrect information, right? So it's kind of shocking. Like, and, and like a lot of what we're taught in schools is really lacking the actual real information. We're not educated naturally here in the United States. We're right. given like like Lauren Hill. I remember you. you probably remember the Fuji artist. She used to, her album was titled "The Miseducation of Lauren Hill." Well, I mean that goes way back to what you and I have been discussing and talking about for so long, right? Yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at. So yeah. um, it's all about uh, how you've been taught. Yeah. Um, and when you're looking at that type of thing, it is going right back to what you and I have been discussing. Uh -huh. And it has to go right back to, it's almost like a, a, a an unlearning and relearning. It is. It is. Right? That's exactly it what it is. And so to be deprogrammed, I mean, I, I told someone, you know, it's like almost trying to chip away at Mount St. Helens. Yeah. Right? The mountain yeah. is so big. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's almost a pick for error to try to chip away at a paradigm that's been built over things over so long. Yeah. Yeah. And that, right? And that's exactly that. I was talking to someone about that just last week. Yeah. And I said, because of that issue, that's the reason why people are so strong on these paradigms. Yeah. That just don't change because they're like Mount St. Helen type of deals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. And it's so, right. And to try to chip away at that, right, it's almost next to impossible, especially when a person has had layers upon layers. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is right. stuff that's a, like, a yeah, it's, I mean, this stuff is like, it's in your subconscious, stuff that you oh, don't, yes. re, you, stuff that you don't even realize is there. Not, I mean, yes. so it, it's, it's already difficult to fight that kind of programming, right? But when it's hitting you on levels that you're not even, like, it, you know, there's ways that you see the world that are influenced by media. Um, that we're not even conscious of. And sometimes we have to stop. I, 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 a lot of times stop and I say, okay, this is how we see it, right? Like, and that's kind of almost in a vacuum. It doesn't, it's not relative to everybody else in the world. Well, yeah, that's why I've been, uh, you and I have been doing a lot of talking, but, um, and I teach these programs in our, our self-defense because I tell people you have to learn how to, to weaponize your mind right. for battle on a regular basis. Yeah. You have to weaponize your mind. You mm -hmm. have to do that. Mm-hmm. Because things are coming at you on a regular basis, and this programming thing is so powerful. If you don't weaponize it, right, you're going to have issues trying to fight it, trying to defeat it, trying to overcome it. Right. Um, right. And so, right. our society right now has so much fear. Right. And it it, it it's incredible. I mean, it, if you really, I mean, like the psychology of where we live right now is an utterly insane place. Like Americans don't really think about it, but like the programming that we're subject to, like the 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 division that we have is not normal, right? Like civilizations weren't built to be kind of how we're operating, where you have this much kind of division between your populace. Like it's 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 a crazy thing that we're subject to here. It is, and that's why I was uh, again explaining to someone how a person is weaponized 
uh, have to weaponize their minds at a young age. And I give you an example. Yeah. Some of the most powerful and most uh, unique uh, Nasuts that went out to battle, their minds were was weaponized. Yeah. These were weaponized kings. Yeah. Right? That uh-huh. went out, right? And th- we're, we're talking about like, changing the tides of battle. Right. Right? That just changed history. Yeah. Okay? But what I'm saying is, is that that's the way that the ancient committee people thought. Yeah. Okay, I want to introduce an image because this is something 